Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do The Labyrinth of Magic, Episode 2 Review. Now, the thing here is that you're, you're, you're probably wondering, why am I calling it The Labyrinth of Magic and not the other name? And the reason why is very simple. Sony Music. Now, Sony Music. Because the last time I did a video revolving around this particular series... They decided to take down that video on a copyright claim. And of course, I kind of notified, and I'm still waiting for my reply back from YouTube and from Sony. But they took this video down on a false accusation. Why is that? Because number one, the audio was mine. Number two, the visuals were mine. Number three, the thumbnail was an original work. So by all legal rights, Sony had no Sony had no grounds, no grounds to take down that video, but they did. So, of course, I kind of notified, and the problem with Sony is that they're being, like, they're really being hard asses. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why. I mean, you would think that they'd actually watch the video, but me, I know Persian version, I know J-Man, we had a deal with this shit. And it's like, why? Like, like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, seriously. Like, if you guys don't want, quote-unquote, revenue to be lost, then put this shit on your own channel. You, you have your own channel. Utilize it, which they really don't, except for the game community. So, I mean, I'm just saying. But Sony Music, guess what? In this video, I'm going to address the video structure so you guys can't take down my video. And if you do then that's completely messed up. So, guess what? In this video, the audio is original. The, the visuals are clearly original. You do not own me. It's, it's that simple. You do not own me, and the audio, that, that's a homemade soundtrack with me speaking over it. And yet again, you don't own me. And the thumbnail is an original work, which does not belong to you at all. So, Sony Music, this video completely follows the rules and regulations set up by YouTube, and I'm following them to the letter. To the letter. So, you have no legal grounds to remove this video. None. None. None whatsoever. So, once again, I'll repeat it. The audio belongs to me. It's an original soundtrack. The visuals belong to me. I am speaking. You do not own me. This is not the slave trade. You do not own me. And guess what? The thumbnail is an original work which you do not own. It is that simple. Everything in this video is original. And it follows the rules and regulations set up by YouTube. And thus, you have no legal grounds to remove this video from YouTube. That simple. If this video, if this video gets taken down by Sony Munich, I, I will point out to YouTube that in this video, I clearly stated, I clearly stated that everything is an original, everything is original, belongs to me. This is my content. Sony Music do not own me. Yet again, it's not the slave trade. So I will say this for every for every video revolving this particular series. All right, I have the right to talk about something that I'm viewing since I live in America, and in America we have something called freedom of speech. I'm I'm just saying. I mean, I know Japan's the I I know that Japan is a is a democracy. So hopefully you understand that concept. Hopefully you do. So once again, I'll say for the for the third time for the third time, the audio belongs to me. The visuals belong to me, and the thumbnail is an original work which does not belong to you. There we go. That simple. So if this video gets taken down, I know for a fact that Sony Music did not watch this video, and they did not hear me talking directly to them, saying that, guess what? This is not yours. So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because I'm fed up. People in this community are fed up with Sony Music pulling this crap for no reason. People who have their own faces on the thumbnail. 
their own faces, their own faces, with no audio soundtrack, no copyright material on their video, and their stuff is being their stuff is, is uh, being taken down. Their channels are being shut down for some ridiculous, idiotic reason because Sony Music and you and you, and the other companies are just unbelievably paranoid, unbelievably paranoid. They really are. It's it's infuriating because you would think that. They want to help promote their content, but no, 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 sir. Take you down. Take you down. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. So let me, yeah, I know it was five minutes, but I had to say that because, again, this is something that I think needs to be addressed because if I don't address it, then people aren't going to realize that there's a company out there who are taking full advantage of YouTube and they're just taking down videos like that. Even videos that have no bearing on their company whatsoever. It's like, what? Uh, unbelievable. Un unbelievable. It really is. It's sickening. Like, why do we have to deal with this kind of stuff? Like, why is it that they can take down our videos on the spot? But YouTube, we have to file a count notification and it takes forever. 10 to 15 days. And I'm still waiting. Like seriously, like like what is up with that? Everything everything can be original, your own soundtrack, your own audio, your own thumbnail, your own visuals can be everything can be original. And they'll just say some bullshit. Like, yeah, like that's ours. And and you and YouTube will like dogs, they'll take that shit down on the spot. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's like they don't actually watch the video. They don't actually analyze the video to make sure that it's actually confirmed copyright material they don't do that apparently because people's videos which are purely original are still being taken down this community and it's crap it's crap it's crap 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 it's a load of donkey shit and i hate donkey shit so yeah um yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry so so let me just um yeah let me just uh go into the actual series the labyrinth of magic episode to review so um <laughs> oh man wow what this episode basically is is that it's basically revolving around the character uh alibaba mostly the character alibaba and we see him actually play a lead role in this episode like a full-on lead role where the character's aladdin and uh, i think her name is uh Morgana or uh, more uh, more Morgana, yeah Morgana. She, well, no, she, she she she's not following him, but I guess in the way she's inspired by him and Alibaba because she sees that you know they actually have a good friendship and they're free. The main thing here is that they're free. They're free. They're not shackled. They're not slaves. And she wants to be free like that, which is why in later in the series I believe that they are like the like the main trio. Alibaba, Aladdin, and her. Now, the thing here is that this episode, the way it played out, I liked it a lot. Because what happens is that after the last episode and they run back to the big tower, um, what's it called again? Uh, Adam. What happens is that they go inside it. Well, by accident, mainly. I mean, they were going inside it anyway. But what happened was that <laughs> Aladdin kind of got, like, he kind of passed out and then bumped into Alibaba. And thus, they got sucked inside the tower. And this, I think, is very key. Very, very key. What happened is that they got sucked in. And then, all of a sudden, Alibaba appears to be facing a planet. And that caught my attention. That caught my attention real quick. Because it looked like a legitimate planet. With like, these rays of light sticking out of it. And then, one of the rays of light focused on Alibaba and Aladdin. And then, they get sucked inside the labyrinth. The, uh, you know, like, yeah, like the actual labyrinth. And then he wakes up, he finds himself in this pool, which winds up igniting on fire, and he saves Aladdin just in time. And what happened is that throughout the course of the episode, we see Aladdin struggle, you know, you know, do his thing without Alibaba. Because usually Alibaba, I mean, because, no, nah, flip, flip, flip it around, all right? Flip it around. Uh, we see Alibaba struggle without Aladdin. Because usually Aladdin's always there for him to help to help him out. But we see that Alibaba is in fact not useless whatsoever. I mean, it was sort of confirmed 
in the last week's episode, but in this, but in uh, this week's episode, it was definitely confirmed that Alibaba is in fact a core member. He, uh, duh, he is able with like some weird, like big, ah, uh, like like too short to be a short sword, but too small, but but too big, too big to be a dagger. It was kind of like a weird blade, but basically, like w w with this weird blade. He was able to actually fend off these bug-like creatures that were attacking him and Aladdin, and he and he was he he was actually doing pretty pretty well until these bugs melted down and fused, and then what happened was that they created this larger bug, which of course Aladdin at, at, at this point has to step in. And by the way, apparently Aladdin cannot use the creature or the uh, genie, the Jinn, uh, Ugo, without. Using his own energy, which means that that's what that's the reason why he eats so much, because he's sustaining energy for both himself and Ugo. So every time he uses Ugo, he has to use energy, and thus that energy translates as him needing more food. So he uses Ugo. Ugo uses like a hidden technique or like an ogi. He c completely destroys his butt, makes a big crater in the ground, and Aladdin passes out. At this point in time, he's pretty much useless. And then we see that uh, Alibaba, he hides Aladdin in some like corner, in some crevice, and they are resting. But then he hears some noise. He, he hears footsteps. And he looks out, and he sees the sheriff, the guy who ran the town outside the tower. He sees him, and, he's, and he, he has decided to follow Ugo and, and um, not Ugo, uh, Aladdin and Alibaba into the labyrinth itself. So now Alibaba knows that he's being hunted down. And what happens is that he turns away, and then Ben, here comes uh, Morgana, and she's right there. She's right there, watching it. And of course, the sheriff follows instead, and he calls, uh, what what's his face? He calls, uh, he calls Aladdin Omagi, which I'm not too sure is like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but apparently he is Omagi. So, we'll see... Where that leads, maybe it has a connection with with, with with that guy in the opening. Cause I noticed how in the opening, there's like a guy with like who looks kinda like uh, Aladdin, but he has black hair and he's you know older. So we'll see. And what happens is that this guy, this sheriff, he is the definition of an asshole. Because the slave, because of course Alibaba tries to prevent him from leaving with uh with a uh, Aladdin, but this slave, all right, he tells the slave to you know take care of Alibaba. The slave swings, Alibaba dodges very swiftly, and then he has his you know dagger, his big dagger pointed at this guy's neck, and then the sheriff instead decides decides to repeatedly, repeatedly stab this man in the chest with his sword. Repeat a time, just bam, 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 bam. Just talking as if like this was nothing to him. Cause I mean, of course, like they're slaves. And we see the the difference in class between the slaves and the lords. And this lord is literally able to stab this slave in the gut and in the chest repeated times, and the slave can't do a single thing, even though they are in a labyrinth where no one, where none of the guards can assist their Lord Sheriff. No, even still, he won't do shit. I mean, the way I see it is that this girl, uh, uh, Morgana, she can take out the Sheriff easy if she really wants to. Because this guy does not seem powerful whatsoever. However, she won't. Because he, be, because she knows his influence outside of the city, and she fears that. Even though she could take him out in this labyrinth, she won't. And that, to me, is a definite statement that, you know, slaves are like pieces of meat, like shit on the road. And that's crazy stuff. It really is. What happens here is that at this point in time, uh, the sheriff convinces Alibaba to go with him and search for the exit or um, the gateway. I forgot what it's called, like, the gate of truth. I'm not too sure. But what happened is that um, Alibaba actually winds up in this uh, gate called the Dragon Fire Gate, I believe so. 
and he has to dodge these pillars of fire in order to get to the switch and turn the fire off. He does so because the sheriff is like, you know, he's a dick. And he actually dodges all the fire, which impressed the fuck out of me. And then he opens a switch. As he opens a switch, the sheriff runs through the open gate, as does Morgana and that one uh, slave guy. And then a big fire pillar comes beneath Alibaba, and it appears to incinerate him. And at this point in time, we have to assume that Alibaba's dead. Of course, we know he's not dead since he's the main character, or one of the main characters, but still, you know, at this point in time, we assume that he's dead. Now, the thing is that the chef doesn't give a fuck. Magi, uh, or, um, um, uh, Aladdin, he wakes up, and then, at this point, Aladdin is resting, eating his food, while the sheriff and that big slave, they go further along, while Morgana is told to watch Aladdin, and Aladdin and Morgana have this conversation where she reveals her name, and of course she reveals her homeland, which apparently is some dark country, which by the way is not actually like a dark country, more or less it's an under, it's, it's an underdeveloped country. Where they don't really require uh, technology, they're more they're more one 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 with nature. Um, she explained how it was like a very vast continent with uh, a lot of large animals. The, the the sky was always bright and shining. Uh, you know, lush grasses, plains. You know, yada yada. So, so basically, in a sense, kind of like Africa, where in a sense Africa is more underdeveloped than a majority of the United States. So that's the way it is. But um. Yeah, it's that same comparison. It really is. Which, you know, defines the slave statement even further. Because in real life, the slaves came from Africa. And in this case, the slaves came from the Dark Continent. Which I forgot the exact name for, but I'll remember next week. And the thing that we can see here is that she really does not want to be here. Obviously, like, no shit. And Aladdin is reinforcing the statement that, you know, I can free you. I have the power to do so. But she, again, fears the influence and the power of the sheriff. She informs Aladdin that Alibaba's dead. Alibaba, and then Aladdin looks up. Alibaba's right above him on some tower. He's like, fucking, yeah. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> he's right above him, just chilling. And Aladdin's like, uh, yeah, uh, I guess he is dead. Like, he was very strange. So he played it as if like he was dead. And then... Aladdin comes, and then Alibaba comes down, and then he kind of like, I don't know what he did exactly, but they wind up leaving. I think he grabbed something. I'm not sure what happened. But basically, it's like, he comes down, and then, uh, they, like, he talks some where he says some things to Morgana, and then <laughs> Aladdin and Alibaba, they both bail. Cause, oh, yeah, I forgot, yeah. He finds this, uh, he finds the actual root, because... What happened was, back in the Dragon Gateway, back in the Dragon Gateway, Alibaba, he mistranslated on purpose. Because what happened was, the actual gate itself, the switch itself, was a gate. So he opens the gate, and he goes through the actual, like, the actual, like, legitimate pathway. So what happens is, once the sheriff comes back from finding all these monsters, well, not, not the sheriff himself, but his slave is finding all, all these weird orange monsters and shit, he comes back. He's like, what the hell? I thought you were dead. And then he, and then that's when Alibaba explains about the whole entire, about, about the real gateway that leads to this whole entire, that leads to this actual, like, the ending of the actual uh, labyrinth. And then Alibaba and uh, <laughs> Aladdin, they escape via magical carpet. Morgana, which surprised me, she runs up the wall. Like, her foot, like, goes through the actual bricks on some, like, fear shit. And she runs up the wall and almost grabs Alibaba's uh, flying magical carpet. But she can't reach it in time. She drops down. The sheriff is like, you know, fuck you. He, sh he starts kicking her like, I'm going to kill these guys. And then the last scene we see of the episode is a scene of uh, Alibaba and Aladdin. And then they are in front of this gate with that same symbol of the, uh, like, it's the same symbol on a, on a, Al Aladdin's fruit, uh, Aladdin's uh, flute, same, same exact symbol, and they say open sesame, the gate opens, and what happens here, which I think is very, very, very key, 
Obviously. What happens here is that the gate opens, the room around them alters into like an actual sky. Like an actual outside structure. And then what happens is that they, we, we get a bird's eye view of where they are. And this gate is on some big tower. On some weird ring-shaped structure. And beneath it is a city. And that there is the end of the episode. So the thing that I noticed, alright? Because in my opinion, like the, like the key, key things, alright? Was at the beginning and at the end. At the beginning, what happened? We see Aladdin and Alibaba. And they're facing what appears to be a planet. They get sucked into the planet via this light. The moment Alibaba and Aladdin exit the labyrinth, they appear to be in another in another place. So maybe, and I'm saying maybe, maybe, these labyrinths, these towers, are gateways to other worlds. To other, no, not to other worlds, to, to this one particular world. Either it's another world by itself, or it's an alternate world that is akin to the older world. The, uh, you know, like the actual original world. Because what happens is that I kind of noticed how it's shaped like the labyrinth that we saw at the beginning, Adam. It appears to be the same structure, a little bit altered, as the tower that we see at the end of the episode. So maybe the labyrinths are kind of connected, like they're kind of like doorways to other worlds. Maybe a possibility. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Because again, when we see Alibaba and Aladdin, when they first enter the labyrinth, they're staring at a fucking planet. So that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. And one more thing. Um, when Ugo used his max power and he made that crater, apparently there were these like weird butterflies or like these weird white birds surrounding him. These birds slash butterflies may be magic amplifiers where once Aladdin creates these butterflies or birds, they start to amplify the magic around the area. I'm, I'm again, I'm not too sure, but that's the way it's looking. And I mean, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. And I also noticed one last thing. I noticed how in this labyrinth there was a lot of fire shit. Like, there, I mean, like think about it. At first, there was a fire. Like there, there was a lake that caught on fire. And then they fought a monster, a bug creature that could spit out fire. And then there was a fire gate. So, and I noticed how in the opening, we see Alibaba, and he uses this, and his dagger can use fire. So maybe after this whole entire labyrinth journey, he may have this, like, fire, like, like fire may, may be added to his uh, actual uh, dagger, his big dagger. So I I'm not too sure. I mean, probably. I don't think so. I really would. I really, I really would. Because the way I see it is that Morgana, she is a hand-to-hand -hand specialist that uses kind of, you know, like footwork. And she's kind of set, in my opinion, as of right now. Obviously, Aladdin is. And Alibaba, even though he is kind of swift when it comes to his uh, footwork and sword play, he's not really all that great. So when they go off an adventure to other labyrinths, He's going to need more skills. So his fire dagger would make a lot more sense to get now as opposed to later. That's what I'm thinking. So that being said, I'm done. I'm sorry if this review took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Because, again, I, I had to address Sony Music. Because I'm, I'm sick and tired of that crap. I really am. I mean, you would think that they'd actually go over the video itself, review it, to see if there's actual legitimate copyright content in that video. Or based around that video. But the fact that there are people in this community. Who are suffering. Because Sony Music do not take. The appropriate measures. To make sure that. All the copyright claims are valid. Yeah it's kind of an issue. It, it really is. It, it, it's infuriating. Like the way I see it is that they see the title. And they're like oh. You know take it down. Like, 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 like what is that? What is that? Like no. Like, like that, that to me is, is, is sickening because they can do that like that. And YouTube, we need to go through this entire process to try and get our stuff back. 
There, there have been YouTube channels taken down because Sony Music have falsified their copyright claims, claiming that this person's video was copyright material, even though it wasn't even close. So, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's, uh, yeah. It's a shame. It really, it's a shame. Because Sony Music, if they wanted to end this whole entire quote-unquote copyright uh, frenzy on YouTube, then they could put all the content on their channel, on on the Sony channel on YouTube. But they don't, they, they, they don't do that. They don't do that. So, but yeah, whatever. Um, uh, I'm done. So I will see you guys later. King Lightning. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe as always. And I'm signing out. Peace. Have a nice day. And by the way, the link to the episode is going to be on the fan page. Signing out.